Today, the subject is assemblage, and that's what we're working on. The topic is one near and dear to my heart, and I'm going to show you lots of things. First, we should take a look just to see what's going on on this table. There is basically what you might expect, just a whole lot of piles of junk and chaos, some tools, some materials, because with assemblage, it really is bringing order to chaos. You start with all kinds of materials, and um, I never quite know where I'm going, but I have some real clear ideas about things I might wish to achieve. So here, for instance, um, is a piece that's uh, mid midway through its its progress, and what I can tell you about it is that it is um, it is uh, you're looking at something that everything you see now is is attached, and you can see some screws are in here. A lot of the ways that it's attached are hidden, but the basic method I use when I'm working in a, a uh, a kind of relief like this, something that can get hung on a wall, is I start with a three quarter inch piece of plywood, uh, something much like you see here. So the beginnings is a three quarter inch piece of plywood that I begin to arrange things on here. And um, this, is, this is something that could become a composition. Um, sometimes you might want to go a little bit more, get more dimension, or you might find something like this. This is a, I think I'll work on this today with you. This is a um, part of a cabinet uh, that was inside a door and you were supposed to put, I guess it was for storing long items. And um, I just like the way it uh, has some dimension. It has some uh, cavities that I could possibly fill here with ideas. So I'll start working on that. Um, but let's go back and take a look at this one mid-progress so we see where this is at this stage and what's going on with it. One of the things that um, I'm very interested in, um, in this one, I've made some a lot of decisions as I move along. And at this stage, it's almost entirely visual without too much content, meaning that it's low profile materials without materials that bring in like high profile objects that would bring in um, lots of narrative and story. With one exception, there's a pretty glaring um, bit of uh, content narrative, and that is that if you look through these crevices here, what you, um, I don't know how clear it is on the, on the film, but what you have there is um, an American flag, which is peeking through the rusted kind of rotting pieces of corrugated metal. So the American flag is a pretty strong, powerful symbol. A lot of a lot of subtext, a lot of narrative. So one of the ways that I can um, uh, tone it down is to just let a little bit of it come through rather than a whole lot of American flag. It's a lower layer, so we see less of it. And so we can, we can make it um, something to be discovered rather than just in your face. Um, I love over here the, the contrast. This, this has a lot of layering and complexity and detail, this has just one panel with one item dead center. And so I like that kind of contrast between this half of the piece and this half of the piece. And I'm gonna layer this up a little bit more, put some more items on there. Um, and so I, I play with things. I get things that I kind of grab them and see what they'll look like. So I take this and I take a look at it and see how that feels to me where I can play with it this way and I just move it around and see how I think I would like to see it arranged. Um, it can also go this way. I think I might like that, something along those lines. And then I can increase a sense of layering. Even, even that can be slightly um, obscured by something else. And something when you have, this is a, um, uh, a kind of instruction panel or information panel for a, a military storage box of some kind. Um, and then when I make part of it illegible by covering it up, it adds perhaps some interest and intrigue. And when I have a form like this, I'll look at it to see which side, is, which side has the, the most color that I like. Um, these are three um, burners for an old barbecue. 
and I've already checked to see what that slides in here. And I like the way that kind of crosses over a little bit into this uh, more um, subtle panel, more quiet area. And I also like uh, the way it slots in here and it gives a little bit more depth at that very top and, and tones down the yellow bar a little bit. So all of this is still very low profile. Um, the writing, anytime you have writing, it might increase the, the sense of um, narrative. And I'm gonna do some very explicit writing. I wanna put two words on here. Uh, two French words, cur and perdu. So I bought these. Um, these are um, little letters, uh, adhesive letters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the words that I want where I want them by adhering the letters. And then I'm going to paint over them and then peel the letters off. So that's how I'm going to get some, some writing in this. Um, so now this is often a way I work, which is I build up layer and layer and layer, lots of interesting compositionally compelling uh, kinds of um, ideas, some parallel and perpendicular aspects. The, the, um, whenever I have mesh, it kind of tones down what's below it. It kind of acts almost like a, a wash to obscure a little bit. And I like um, the complexity of the layer of this side, the simplicity of that side. And everything is pretty much non-defined low profile. And then I often will at some point in the process, usually about this stage, start considering adding in elements of high profile. And here are some of those. Uh, I have in previous pieces done something with a plumb bob. This is a kind of, um, I found this uh, cast iron, quite heavy uh, cast iron ball here. And I think I'm going to, it's on a, a bracket here that I can slide in here. I'll have to attach it, do some drilling and screwing it, and then it'll hang down. I haven't quite figured out where and how I want to attach it just yet. Um, I, I think it might, it might be even somewhere here or here or here. I think that might be where it goes. And then what else happens is that this piece will be on the top of it. And what this is, this will go in there. And this is actually a piece of military hardware. Um, this is a um, a target bomb. It's dropped from an airplane with water inside it so that when it hits, um, it makes uh, the water it hits at such a velocity that it turns into a big, big cloud of a uh, burst of, of, of particles. And that can be easily seen and registered. So that's how that uh, item works uh, in the military. So that piece will be in there. This uh, ball will be hanging down. Um, much like my um, plumb bob ideas. And then um, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this uh, duck or not. I've been playing with that idea. So that's, that's in there. These are all things. This is where this one is going. So you can see it's close to resolve. There's a lot of uh, drilling and screwing and attaching still to go here. But let's take a look at some other ideas that I'm working on. Uh, I'll move you over here. Oops take you on a little tour. We're going mobile. So, and I just love assemblage and you can see everybody has a different aesthetic. And mine um, has a lot to do with, um, with a lot of kind of cast off uh, objects there. So you can see some signs uh, for uh, handicap and you can see, um, here's, a, here's a, a pile of things on a plywood board and I haven't, I haven't really decided if this is going to happen or not. I'll lay things out and keep adding and subtracting things. I've got a wheel here. There's not too much of high profile. This is quite a beautiful object. It's a, a piece of splashed uh, bronze, a scrap from a bronze casting that's down here. So I'll just unpack this so you can see how this whole uh, piece is made. Um, so we'll start with... Um, We'll start here, um, just taking off. This is a, a piece of metal. I'll be using this in a lot of my assemblage. This comes from a cylinder, a pipe I found. And this, I found this um, in the north, north uh, coast. And it was part of a pipe that was used in um, some kind of uh, forestry, forestry op operation. But it's quite old because this is a, a, a hot rivet process. It, it predates welding. So there's, there's this uh, idea here on this piece. So I've taken that off. You can see here's a, a bar that I'm using um, to kind of 
connect the wheel. I'm just gonna take the wheel off just so you can unpack and see how this piece has been put together. Here's a little screen to kind of subdue some of this aspect here. This is a, a splash of bronze metal from a casting. So I'm gonna move that off. And now we're down to just two pieces. This is a some kind of uh, gasket or bracket for probably some kind of motor mount, I don't really know. And then here is just a piece of corrugated metal uh, roofing material uh, that's been used. Let's see. You can see it's been used, uh, it's old and I've actually used it for uh, pit firing. So it's been heated up to high temperatures. Uh, and uh, so it's got a lot of color and texture quality to it. And then I'm gonna just put these pieces back now. You see, again, the idea is just layer, 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 just kind of, um, just kind of put these things into place in a way that I find uh, visually interesting. And this is where they were. I haven't decided again, so it could change. Um, I like this bar moving across and kind of picking up the wheel. I like the idea that the wheel might uh, exceed the edge just like this piece, this bronze piece over here is doing. Uh, I know that there's, it's a little hard to see with the lighting as it is. And then there's a decision about whether I put that piece down lower or kind of use it as the top edge of a frame. So that goes like that. I have all kinds of other possibilities lying around. I have this, uh, this is a, um, a, the lid of a first aid kit from a Navy life raft. I don't know where I got it, but it's kind of interesting language to, to maybe put into something. I don't know if that's where it would go, but that starts to add narrative, right? Because it's, it's got, uh, it's, it's an identifiable symbol, as is this. This is a very old corroded wrench, and that might be interesting to incorporate into something. Again, it's a more high profile narrative uh, addition to the composition. Let's go back over here and just work a little bit. So it's impossible to tell you what you will need to do your assemblage because you're going to find your own materials. You're going to, you may choose to use something like a, a, a toolbox or a dresser or um, you know, some 3D uh, source, like uh, so one of Betty Sarr's pieces we saw that had the, she did a piece with using um, a, starting with a, a, an old scale and then building a three-dimensional in the round sculpture from there. Um, I'm doing, again, I'm working more, uh, more on a uh, flat surface to build a kind of relief idea and um, kind of move things around here a little bit more and you'll see where we're going here. I've got um, some access. I, I have some American flag material from an earlier project. So I think I'll, I'll continue with that idea. And um, we'll work with this idea here, this box. And I'm gonna see if I can get this uh, speaker, or the, everything, the microphone and everything set up um, so that you can watch me do this. It's a real professional quality production here. I'm absolutely thrilled with my, my uh, filming abilities here. There we go, you see the, the box here. And what I'm gonna be doing is, I've got a little flag material. And I've cut a piece of wood that fits this shape exactly. This area leaves the windows open because I want to use those. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, think about where, how I'm going to arrange that flag. I think it'll be something like that. Mm -hmm. And so what I need to do, I'll start mostly I can, you know, with different ways to, to join things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by putting some of our glue here. This is the Elmer's white glue. Um, should work fine with this flag rather than using the, I'm not gonna use the wood glue on this because it's wood and material. And this is, this is kind of overkill. I like my, my assemblage to really hold together. Some of this, Glue may ooze through the flag, but it's not really a problem because it does dry clear. So we're going to take that and center that kind of in the, in the middle here. 
And then we're going to stretch this like we would a canvas. And when you're stretching a canvas, this is a nice tool. This is a, um, uh, this is a staple gun, but you can use uh, tacks, a nail, little tacks, na little small nails and a hammer. And to do this, what you do is you pull in here on this side and one staple down. And then you pull in on the opposite of that to stretch it so it doesn't have wrinkles. And you staple that down. And then you work to the middle of the top. And then you pull from the bottom. And now you have your stretching canvas, basically. And you don't have to pull too hard. I'm going to take this and stretch this side a little bit. And just staple that down. And then go across the way and pull against those two staples and tighten those in. Now I'll come back up here and start advancing that idea here at the top, pulling those staples, putting those staples in as I pull the cloth to ensure hopefully a wrinkle-free presentation at the front. Now I'm going to, I don't know that they'll actually be hospital corners, but I'm going to try to deal with these corners in some in a somewhat organized fashion. Just press those in. Just to get those kind of tucked in. There we go. So rather rapidly here I have a you know it's a great way to add color and pretty powerful narrative here. You know that this. You know you can't use. There are certain symbols you can't. You can't use them without um, bringing in all the meaning that they carry. And certainly, an American flag is filled with powerful, powerful associations. And so you just want to take responsibility for your your communication. So I'm saying something about my experience living in America these days. I don't know what I'm saying just yet, but we'll see how that comes about. Now, you can see that's quite a nice appearance. A little bit of the glue is coming through, but that's not really a concern. And I'm going to have that there. And here's another piece of that really interesting metal. And I'm going to have that here. So if I'm going to put that there, then what it tells me is I can, uh, you can see I've almost obscured all of the flag, not all of it, but almost all of it. So um, it's, it's a really, uh, it becomes a much more subtle presence. Um, it'll be discovered by the viewer rather than starting out with a very bold statement. So now if that's where I'm gonna go, I know I have space here to actually screw that flag piece down so I can kind of visualize where that goes. I have a, a screw gun, but a regular Phillips screwdriver will work as well. This one, however, is now it's always a battery gone when you need it. So I'll take this out and see if I have another one. And it doesn't appear that I do have one that's working. It's almost like it's the, uh, the screwdriver itself that is in sh bad shape. So what I can do is get a Phillips screwdriver. I will um, start with a, I, I'll come back to this as soon as I get all my tools in order. So we'll, we'll start with another recording in just a moment.